So to put the three jaw chuck in, to put in this piece right here, which is this old shifter knob, it's not old, but the shifter knob that I made a while back, and I want to put a, just one strip of knurling around the largest point of it. So I want to put the three jaw chuck in so I can use this knurling tool to do that. Now in order to put the three jaw chuck in, I just take this draw bar loose to take the R8 collet out. Next up is the three jaw chuck. And I'm going to put the part in the three jaw chuck like this. There's this hole in here, put it right on there like that, and then expand the jaws of the chuck. So I'm going to leave these Belleville washers on here, these spring washers or whatever you want to call them, they're called Belleville washers. I'm going to keep those on there. Those are for the power draw bar, but I'm just going to go ahead and leave them on there. Now I'm going to go ahead and try to knurl the one that I made my, for myself last time. So this one is the one I made for myself and if you can recall I had uh, some chattering issues so that's why it looks like this. Anyway, I'm going to do this one first and try to set this in there and knurl it. Now one thing that I forgot to mention is I always put the speed setting when I do any mill turning. I put the speed setting on the lowest setting basically. So I'm going to go very low RPM. I think somewhere around 100 RPM would probably suffice for these knurling tools like this. So basically all I'm going to do is come down here and I'm going to manual it to see exactly where I want it. There's no programming. I don't even know how you would program something like this. So I'm just going to manual it down here and see exactly where I sort of want it. And then before I do anything, I want to tighten these knurling rollers onto this. And once after I do that, and then I'm going to start the speed and just go from there and see what happens. Like I said, this first one is a test part. And then we're gonna do a real one. So that turned out a little weird. I don't think I had it in the chuck straight. You probably saw that. And I didn't want to take it back out because then I would risk moving the wheels and then therefore messing up the pattern. So I'm going to go a little bit more and just see what happens here. Maybe try to align this back up. When I do the other one, I'm going to make sure I'm going to take the indicator in there and make sure this is perfectly concentric. So here is the neural on the test piece. And mind you, this is 303 stainless steel. So it's rather hard and it turned out lopsided so hopefully that doesn't happen with this one because that would just be unfortunate so I'm making sure it's not going to be lopsided with this one it wasn't fully indicated in the chuck so that's what I'm doing here indicating it in the chuck make sure this is straight and then I'm going to try a different method here rather than clamping on the piece I found that this is supposed to do two inches like a two inch wide piece well this is only like an inch and three quarter maybe and it still won't get the little rollers around the part so I found that once I have these closer together as close as I can then everything will be more straight I mean there's a little bit of wiggle room here but then they both are together I mean one's not going to be up this way and the other one's that way so we're going to try that out and I hope that it works out okay. I'm probably not going to do as big of a strip like I did on this one. Just a real, just a, just a smaller one. And then I'll polish it afterwards. So I got her dialed in concentrically to just under one thousandths of run out. So not too bad for what we're doing dealing with here. I think this I think the calibration standard specification for this three jaw chuck is like five thousandths run out, so I think we'll be doing alright. Once and also I don't ever do anything precise with this three jaw chuck in here. Any type of precision work that I happen to do, I it's all milling. I don't ever try to use this mill as a lathe and think that it's going to turn parts out properly. Yeah. 
So I think I'm gonna leave it at that. I know it's not technically a really nice knurl, but this thing is not very easy to do, and I don't necessarily want to put that much load because I'm essentially using it as a bump knurl rather than like a, a clamp knurling tool because it won't fit over top of this, nor can I find one that can fit over top of this larger stock. So all, all the customer really wanted was just a, a nice grip around the outside. So that's kind of what that is. He said after a while, because I've had this for a long time now, trying to find the right knurling tool for a decent price. So I don't really want to mess this up any more than it already is. Not that it's messed up at all right now, but I don't really want to go any further with this because it looks halfway decent right now and I can go ahead and polish it and make it look good. I mean, it looks really not terrible. <laughs> kind of sucks that I couldn't get a nice diamond pattern knurl, but it looks all right for what I'm trying to do. So I usually use this for like rims on my car, uh, just getting some like oxidation off and all that stuff, but I found that it works really well polishing stuff like the bent shift extensions that I make and it actually polished this one made it look fairly good so I'm just going to continue to use that stuff also to polish stuff like this I use the drill and I put the tap back in the drill and then I run it back into the threads and then I can turn it and polish it works great it would work even better if I had a lathe maybe at some point I think that's all I can do for that one. Sometimes that's how things go. I'm lucky this time that I was allowed to basically, I had freedom to do basically whatever I want. Also, one last thing, I mentioned it in my last video uh, about pumping heat from the wood burning stove that I have in the house that we are renting. And basically, this is in the basement. We're, it's a split level home, we're in the basement. There's this vent right here. So this vent comes out on the other side. So that's the garage right there, and this vent is in here. So that vent goes to the wood stove room, and I plumbed in some heating, some ductwork here, and there's an inline fan, so one of these awesome fans right here. This fan, there's one right there, pumps out to the garage, and comes out that little hole right there and it keeps it fairly warm in here I mean it was like I don't know 35 degrees today and it was stated solid 55 to 60 in the garage not too bad and then I have an inline fan going to the rest of the house and it's always on I can turn them on off and on whenever I want and I did that in hopes to pump heat to the rest of the house. Yeah, we're about almost 60 in here. Not too bad. So that is it for now. So it didn't really turn out the way I originally intended it to be, but at least we tried something and it wasn't very expensive. I think that tool was around like 30 bucks off Amazon. I didn't really want to try anything expensive because I didn't want this to happen. And I bought a $150 tool or something like that. So not too bad in the end. And I think, I, I mean, I'm all right with that, how it turned out. There's just no way, I don't think I've, I've could have done it. And I probably am near the wrecking point of my spindle. And I'm just tired. I, I, the mill turning itself kind of scares me just because I don't want to put a whole huge load on the spindle itself. I think I'm going to tone it back on the mill turning for now, at least I hope to, and go back to doing some mill work. I'm not sure what's next, but we will find out and go from there. So I think that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Oh, 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 oh,